Invite a budget blind style consultant to show you how to transform your rooms just by changing your window coverings. Canada's number one choice for window coverings. Visit budgetblinds.ca today. Good evening, everybody. Now, on the eve of Thanksgiving, the Lloydminster Rohan Rays have plenty to be thankful for. A perfect start to the young campaign. They hope to improve to 3-0, taking on the Northwest Calgary Stampeders. We'll pick it up in the second period, and it was a wild one. Game tied at two, Rage power play. Kirst Kirsten's point shot gets redirected by the stick of a Stampede's player. That's Kirsten's second goal of the afternoon. It's 3-2, Rage. 15 seconds after that goal, the Rage get another. Ryan Layen that will give them a two-goal advantage. 23 seconds after that, how is Quist? He will go short side, it's all of a sudden 5-2. Now the Stamps call a timeout and get back on track less than a minute later after the Quist goal. Off the faceoff, Neil Kingston will score, putting the visitors within two. That didn't last long, however, as Orenson Tazza receiving the saucer pass will go upstairs to make it 6-3 for the home side. Then it'll be Santazzo once again on the doorstep with 45 seconds to go in the period. It was 7-3, both teams combining for six goals in five and a half minutes. Now in the third, Santazzo would add one more for the Hattie. Rage Cruz to the 8-3 win. Second period was really, you know, a solid effort. Uh, you know, we had one line uh, more by Lee and Quist. They got us going that period with their aggressive play and, and uh, you know, we forechecked well and in the third period we just uh, took care of the puck and uh, made sure that we had uh, the uh, proper possession time to uh, withhold that lead. Well, be stronger in the D zone, that's for sure, and just keep moving our feet is a good thing that we need to keep, like, forwarding to the next game. It was great, we just never stopped working, kept moving our feet and just everything went our way. All right, we'll move on to the Bantam Ice Cats. They looked for a clean sweep at home this weekend. They finished off taking out the St. Albert Raiders today. And we'll pick it up in the first, late in the period. There's going to be a scramble in front. It's going to be Abby Earl who will stick away the rebound. It is now 1-0 for the Ice Cats. Now, there'll be no scoring until late in the second or early in the second period. A little bit of a giveaway here by the Ice Cats will lead to a slightly easy goal there for Andrea Gauthier, but uh, everything else stood on the head, or at least all on Molly Mitchell, that is, making plenty of stops in the third period, including this beauty we will have for you after ricocheting off the boards. It comes right out in front as she just sticks out the glove. I guess she went to the Dominic Hasek School of Fine Goaltending. Anyways, they go to a shootout. The Ice Cats will get the goal courtesy of Jaden Ackroyd, and then it's down to one-on-one. -on -one. It's Mitchell who comes out on top with the glove. Ice Cats win a big one in a shootout. 2-1 the final. Just try to keep focused and make sure I don't lose control, I guess, and just keep my head in the game. Well, like the one time today we were in the corner and I was like on the ground laying and my glove went up and I just saved it, I guess. Yeah. A bit of an ugly win. We had a pretty poor second period, but... Um, first period was our best. We had a good start, and then Molly just ended up shutting the door. Like our our goaltending for the last four games has been phenomenal. They've held us in there. Uh, we're giving up a lot of shots, but mostly they're from the outside, so they're doing their job. All right, the Lloydminster Junior B Bandits look to be undefeated at home this weekend. Last night they faced the Bakerville Rangers, a team that stomped on the Cold Lake Ice their previous contest. So it wouldn't be easy. We'll pick this up in the second. It's tied one all. Brody Pollard picks up his second goal of the game and restore the Bandits' edge. That will quickly go up a goal. On the man advantage, it'll be Tate Lychuk snapping it home to give Lloyd a 3-1 lead. The Rangers would make it 3-2. Tanner Lupel, though, nice little feed from Pollard. Wide open cage, it's 4-2 Bandits after 40. But Vagerville will get back into this game via some Bandits mistakes. Grayson Saprovic will capitalize on the turnover. Then, while shorthanded, it's going to be Wyatt Murphy who will join the rush. No one picks him up as he beats Tristan Brown midway through the third. Now we will go to the Bandits. Calvin Koska, one of those players that needed to step up for his team, and what does he do? He scores, and that would eventually be the game winner. Koska would also add an assist on his effort here on the sixth and final goal by Jesse Stanfield. The Bandits sweep their weekend homestand with a 6-4 victory.
One thing I really like tonight, though, is our effort level uh, came up quite significantly more than the past three three games. So as long as we're starting to get the effort level, we can start to uh, work on managing the puck. All around, our team decided to come out as a team. Um, we didn't work as an individual at all. We, uh, we we had speed, and we wanted to come out with four points, and it happened. So we're pretty proud about that. All right, now it was an interesting game to say the least in Bonneville last night. The Pontiacs would go on to win 7-2, but the storyline was the final 10 minutes of the game. Several ejections, some due to fighting, others including the head coach and the, or both head coaches that is, and the Dragons assistant coach led to the game being called off with less than five minutes to go. Now the reasoning was the Dragons had nobody on their bench as a head coach and as a coach. That is a no-no, so they had to call the game with less than five to go. How about that? It'll be interesting to see what the league will do in terms of disciplinary actions amongst both sides. All right, well, how about this? The Midget AAA Bobcats continue their solid start with a 2-1 win. Nobody ejected in this game, however, in Fort Saskatchewan. Tristan Petrie tied the game midway through the third, and Kobe Walker scored the GWG with four minutes left in the game. And the PWM Steelers were on the road as well today. They took on the Edmonton Thunder. However, they would fall short by a score of 2-1. Thank you.